In the previous video, we learned how to start a replicated cache and where we can use it. In this video, we'll take a look at what a partition cache is and where it can be used. Partition cache is also known as distributed cache and Oracle's documentation uses both of these names. Before getting started, you ought to download and extract the partitioned cache operation zip file to your workspace. After you've successfully imported the project in Eclipse, take a look at the cache configuration file. As seen under the cache mapping element, customers is used as the cache name and my partition schema is the schema name of this cache. If you take a look at my partition schema under the caching schemas element, you'll notice that my partition schema has a backing map of local schema and each server can hold 64 megabytes of data in their local cache. In the previous video, we use a replicated schema element under the caching schema but in this example, we are using the distributed cache clause under the caching schemas element. Before starting your cache server, check the run configurations. Duplicate the replicated cache start and update its name, project, and the main class type. Check if the correct project is being used and also whether JMX management is enabled or not. If everything looks alright, click on apply and then click on run. Once the cache server has started, you'll need to run one more cache server. Click on the partitioned cache start configuration. and you'll now have two cache servers without any data. To add objects into the cache, you ought to run the cache insert class. Before running the cache insert class, however, check its run configurations. Duplicate the partition cache start and correct its name and the main class Then click on Apply. We need to disable storage in order to prevent this process from storing any data. Click on the Disabled Radio button in the local storage line and then click on Apply and Run. This project is similar to the replicated cache project we ran previously, but you'll see the difference while we are looking at JRocket Mission Control. We will expect all elements in the cache to be distributed almost equally among the cache servers with storage parameters enabled. For example, if the size of the clustered cache is 2000 objects, each cache server holds approximately 1000 objects. Let's check the attributes via JRocket Mission Control. On the left hand side, find the cache start class, click on it and start the console. In the mBeans tab, under Coherence, cache, my partition service, you'll see two folders. Expand both and monitor the size attributes. We've got 1059 and 1092. Select the partition schema. The size attributes don't need to be the same for each server. An algorithm takes care of the data distribution automatically and all cache servers hold approximately the same number of records. For example, the first server holds 1,074 objects and the second holds 1,104 objects. We can also add the size attribute to the dashboard in order to easily monitor its size. Select the size and click on Visualize. Add a chart and then click on OK. The partition cache is useful for holding much more data than a replicated cache in a clustered environment because each server holds one partition of all the clustered data and data in the clustered cache is the sum of data held by each server. 
While using the partition cache, in some situations, we may have to access a network as the required object doesn't exist in the cache of a specific server. The clustered cache service receives the object from another cache server, and if the other cache server is running on a different machine, we may need network access. There is a critical question. What will happen if you shut down a cache server? As seen in this example, the clustered data is shared by the first and second server. Let's see what happens when we shut down one of the cached servers. This particular cache server holds 1,127 elements in its cache. Shut down this cache server, revert to JRocket console, and check the size attribute. As you can see, in the other cache server, there are 2,339 elements. It means that the second cache server holds backup data from the first cache server, and coherence loads the backup data into the actual cache for the second server. In this video, we've learned how to use partitioned cache in our clustered environment. In the next video, we'll see how near cache works.